It's about how you feel, yo. But you, you back, you back. Everything's back to normal. Oh yeah, I'm back to training and everything. I'm. Like, Did you get sick good. at all? Like, like sick, sick. Yeah, I mean, I, I lost like 12 pounds, and I was laid up in bed for a while. And, oh, so it, it hit you? I was, yeah, but I wasn't like. I just didn't want to do anything. I was, I felt fucked up, but I wasn't like I got to go to the hospital. Okay, so but you, but you were in bed. You didn't you didn't really function well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, uh, I've had pneumonia before, and I spent like three or four days in the hospital. Yeah, me too. I had but pneumonia. I, yeah, so it wasn't that bad, but I just felt like sh I felt like a bad flu. Yeah, yeah. Like a flu doesn't even have to be a bad flu. It looks like a flu. Yeah. Because yeah. I had a flu, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago. I don't remember. Yeah. That felt like I was dying. Yeah. For three yeah. weeks. The the only thing I really noticed with this thing is it lingered longer. Like I noticed I would feel like I was getting better and then I would get worse. Oh, okay. And I feel like I was getting better and it get worse. And it went up and down like that for like six, seven days. Yeah. I had it. So. I had it when um not not this Olympia, last Olympia, December, November, when Rami arrived. Yeah. And I remember he arrived. Uh, I was three weeks out, and I was, I felt, uh, I, I don't know if that was COVID, but I had a little, a, 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 not a cough, but I, <clears throat> every now and then I had a, <coughs> you know, when you breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I remember he arrived, and then a um, couple of days later, my wife got sick. Hmm. And she was in bed for like four days, like with fever, yeah. full nine yards, I mean everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and I, I didn't have, and, you know, I didn't, that was it for me. The only thing I realized I uh, I was sitting, man. I was sitting on couch, and I realized, like, whew, I got goosebumps. All of a sudden, it felt like, whew, you know, They're cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not really yeah. cold, just goosebumps. I was, I, my hair was all the way up to the top, and it felt like something's yeah. going through me. Yeah. And I still didn't think nothing of it, but I remember every morning I'm in I'm in the bathroom, right? So, yeah. and one of the mornings I'm like, how come I don't smell myself? Because I don't really smell good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I smell like shit. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and then I realized I don't smell. I can't smell. And then I took the, uh, I have a Febreze in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I sprayed a Febreze up my nose to see if I could smell it. And I couldn't. <laughs> That's how I know I had COVID. Yeah. You know, I still can't smell properly. I can, and I can yeah. only taste like halfway. Yeah. I, my taste was fine. It was just a smell. Yeah. All right, so. Hey, one second, one second before we start. Go ahead. We already started, bro. Oh, well, you got, this is going to be live then. It's as real as possible. That's it. All Keeping right. it real back. with the Fuad. I want to back that up a bit. Okay. Yeah. So how's your... Uh... How's what? I don't want to say... Con no, your contest, not contest prep. How's your photo shoot prep going? <laughs> <laughs> what, well, ha me, what happened? You, you fell off. We fell off the board. You fell off the the, uh, <laughs> off the wagon. What happened? Tell me the me truth. And you were, me and you were working together and doing pretty good. And I was my physique was starting to come around. And then I started traveling. I went away to Vancouver for an appearance. And then I got back from Vancouver. And four days later, I left to Dallas to meet up with the guys and do a podcast live and all that. And uh, I was fine in Vancouver. I stayed on my diet the whole way through. When I got to Dallas, we started going to IHOP and having pancakes, and I'm like, okay. So for, for those people who don't know, the prep, the photo shoot prep, was going to potentially be a Toronto Pro prep. But the closer I got to being shredded, the more I realized my physique just wasn't what it is anymore. And I didn't want to go on stage and embarrass myself or like, you know, sometimes guys come back when they just shouldn't come back. True. So, <clears throat> so I decided, and then... Also, you know, the thing happened with George, you know, George passed away and then Sean passed away. Mm. And I'm like, you know, what am I doing at this point? You know, I'm 43. I have nothing to prove. And so I decided we did good work. Like I'm down to 260 this morning. But but if you if you remember correctly, you know, that's exactly what I what I would have hoped would happen. I know. I know and, and I was with you on it. Because, yeah. when, when, you know, for people listening, when I called Dennis and I said, I might, I might want to do Toronto. You literally said to me, I will not help you do Toronto. And I said, okay, well, I want to do a photo shoot. He goes, okay, I'll help you with a photo shoot. So, yeah, yeah. so we pretended it was a photo shoot. But in my head, I was still thinking, maybe when I get to the end, we'll just keep going. I'll get yeah. on stage. But uh, I just decided, like, 
with everything going on health wise with people and then not to mention i got blood work done uh about two weeks ago mm -hmm. before i got sick mm -hmm. uh i got blood work done and i didn't like the way it looked it just didn't look very good it looked a little worse than the last time i did it and mm -hmm. you know blood blood work is all about trend and if the trend is not going horizontal or up that's not a good thing mine was starting to trend a little bit down so i'm like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna focus on being lean looking good and, and focus on your I business do. and focus on yeah. focus on being around for a, a, a long a, you know a lot of more years you know that, that, and I'm, I'm all for that because i feel the same that's why i'm downsizing i'm downsizing with everything possible yeah i'm yeah. downsizing to the point where i don't eat protein i have three small three four ounces of protein a day three times four ounces and i don't yeah. even train to lose yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think that's that's the only way to go. We have nothing to prove. You have nothing well, to prove either. For me, I think I'm still going to just enjoy training. Like, I don't want to not train. I'm still going to eat four or five meals a day. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to reduce my protein levels and reduce food overall. Because I want to come yeah. down to like, you know, I'm 260 now. I'd like to be closer to 240. Okay. Well, you, how then, tall are you? 5'9". Five nine, yeah. So two forty, two forty, two thirty, two forty. Two thirty, two forty. Yeah. Yeah. I like what I what I'd like to do because I think I don't know about you, but I think we all have like a physical competitiveness. So I think I decided uh, if I'm not going to be bodybuilding, I want to put my mind into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, exactly. Why not do something so I, else? So I want to do something else. So my goal, and <laughs> this is probably a, stupid. People listening are probably gonna laugh at me, but my goal is to be a, a black belt by the time I'm fifty. Yeah, why not? Listen, I don't know. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's possible in well, seven years. One but. thing you, I don't know. I don't know either, time wise. But what I what I do know is because you, you got that athlete's mentality, yeah. you know, you could absolutely do it. I don't yeah. know how yeah. fast, depending on how good you are. I think if you're better, you probably get there faster. Yeah. But uh, you know, you're gonna learn real fast that you're gonna have to lose a couple of more pounds because I know, <laughs> I know. I, like I'm gonna have to get down to like two ten, probably two hundred. But yeah, I tried the same. I just need something. I just need something to put my mind into yeah. or else I'm just going to go stir crazy with yeah, like but, nothing to focus on. Yeah, but don't you have enough to focus on, man? No, no, but I mean, work is one thing. You know, podcasts, I got the supplement company, but I need an outlet. That How many hours a day do you give yourself to do something other than work? Uh, well, right now, the gym, you know, so, I go to the gym for an hour or two a day. So is that your gym now? Yeah, I have my own private place. Okay, so see, that's what that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to get my yeah. own private. Well, I got lucky. I'll, I'll tell you the the truth of how it worked out is, uh, my brother owns a manufacturing plant that had a four thousand square foot facility in it that had nothing in it. It was was just available. Guy, sorry, was just available. Yeah, it was just an available space that they had a different guy in there doing boot camps and stuff with the employees. Mm -hmm. And that guy left, so they said to me, "Hey, do you want to do you want that space?" And I said, "Yeah, we can use it for hostile for shooting content for video and stuff." So I don't. Luckily, I don't have. I didn't have to pay any rent or buy the building or anything like that. But I I paid for all the renovations and yeah, put it, putting the mirrors up and putting all the equipment in there and everything. So what, what equipment did you use? Oh, I just I like all the old stuff, man. Yeah. I like all the old stuff. So I got like an old Nebula leg press. I got a lot of old Cybex stuff. Um, the only new thing, the only new things we got was. I got one of those six station uh, cable crossover, like jungle gym things mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Precore. And I got an entire set of dumbbells made from for custom custom dumbbells for hostile from five to 150. Got you. So, so I can't lift the 150s anymore. So they're just for show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I, man, I realized my strength is it's crazy. I used to always be strong. I was strong naturally, you know, but yeah. go and bring it down. And then again, I'm 55. What do I expect? What yeah. am I going to do? I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to stay as strong <laughs> as I was when I was 30. You know, yeah. I finally came to realize that, listen, this, I'm a different person now, you know. I'm just yeah. trying to hang on. I'm trying not to. I'm skinny fat right now, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Somebody said to me in my comment section yesterday, I posted a, a photo from yesterday. And the guy's like, you look smaller. And I'm like... I'm 43 years old. I'm not going to be 300 pounds forever. Bro, I get that all the time. People still text me, oh, you, oh, where's all the gains? <laughs> I tell them the gains is in the bank. The gains is in the bank. Don't worry about my gains. <laughs> so, so, but it's funny because if you stay big, 
then there's people who are like, oh, you're unhealthy. Why are you staying big? Yeah. And if you get smaller, you're like, what happened to you? You look small. Yeah. Like, you're unhealthy regardless. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. yeah it's so funny. Yeah. And, it's, and I get people, I just, the other, there was a comment somewhere, and, you know, and I, it doesn't even bother me anymore. It used to bother me like 10 years yeah. ago. It used yeah. to piss me off. And somebody said, and that's supposed to be a pro bodybuilder? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm bigger than him. Yeah, and then you yeah. then I look at his profile, and you look at that smug, you know, see like a bloated fucking two fifty maybe, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. and then uh, you know I don't even respond to that because I think it's it's fucking ridiculous. But the gym, so the gym is it just for you personally, or do you let people join and train, or do you give memberships, or are you just for personal trainers maybe? So we can't do memberships because of liability issues because it's in a manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. Um, but the people that work at the manufacturing plant get to use it like on their lunch hour. And the, there's a few hostile has a few employees that use it whenever they want, but mainly it's for me and for shooting content, photos and videos yeah. for the company and stuff like that. So it's awesome. It's cool. It's, it's, I never thought I would like training in my own spot. I always thought I wanted a gym that was for everybody, Yeah. which I, which I still do, but I do like how to have my own place. I get to go in I just turn the music up as loud as I want. Right. I kind of zone out for an hour, so it's nice. Right, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, is will there still be the photo shoot now, or uh, not Toronto? But I'm talking about the photo shoot. I don't know. I mean, oh, did you just lie to me and said there's a photo shoot? I, was, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't lie to you. I was intending there on being a photo shoot after Toronto. <laughs> So, okay, so you got me there. Anyways, I, uh, no, I, I got to be honest with you. When I left to Dallas and we started kind of pigging out, my focus shifted. Mm -hmm. I was just having a good time being away. Yeah, I, and it and looked like you guys had a good time, of course. Yeah, and then when I got back, I got COVID, and I lost like twelve pounds, but I looked better. <laughs> I, yeah. got, I got, I got more, I got leaner. I promise I mean, you. If you bring it down to 240, you're going to look better than you do right now. Yeah, and that's the goal. So I just. And I if you bring it down to 230, yeah. you're going to be able to buy clothes. I know. And look good in them. You know what's really sad, though? So we got some new, new t shirts coming out for Hostile, and uh, I do the photo shoots for them. Like I kind of wear them, just do some, you know, model the photos, model the clothing. And uh, I was like, I think I need an XL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I haven't I haven't worn an X. <laughs> I'm down from, I, I I kid you not, I'm down from five X yeah. to one X. Yeah, and I can yeah. squeeze into a large if it's a it's, it's a big large. <laughs> yeah. that's and you know what? And the problem for most guys is they have an issue mentally. They mentally are not ready to to you know to to admit that. So listen, I'm not the guy no more. You know, well, I'm okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm okay with knowing I'm not the guy because we have athletes. So I have like Nathan and I have Samson and I have Brett and I know they're like the, the premier bodybuilders that like we have. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. But what I'm not okay with is I haven't worn an XL since I was like 20 years old. Yeah, but you're not so, an XL yet. You're not an XL yet. You bring it down to 230, you'll find a big XL. Listen, this is a 3X. I'm swimming in it. It's <laughs> like, listen. <laughs> tell, tell me about it, man. I go, every time I go to India, I get yeah. new suits made, okay? Mm. So the last time I've been to India was like a year and a half ago. I had new suits made, yeah. you know, 10 suits, 10 suits, 20 shirts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And now these suits are too big. <laughs> too yeah. So now I'm going to India next week, Monday. Yeah. So I'm being there, I will be there for five days. I called my guy today. I said, listen, I'm gonna be there five days. We, I need to see you the day I arrive, and I need you to have all my suits and stuff ready the day I leave within five yeah. days. I'm ordering new suits. Yeah, yeah. Huh? It's, but it's, a, it's just a tough thing because, uh, I don't know, it's weird. It's such a weird thing. Like, I expect to lose size. I expect to see the number drop on the scale. But having to go from a 2X to an X, you know, because I was like you. I used to wear a 4X. Now then I went to 3, then I went to 2, now I'm down to a 1. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm still going to be wearing a medium. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, see, see I, I was, <laughs> I'm not really worried about dropping, you know, m much lower. I mean, my goal is 220, of course, and I'm at, yeah. the lowest I've been now was 227, first thing in the morning after cardio. Wow. So, but at, at night, I'm <laughs> back to two, 230, 234, 235, yeah. you yeah. know, so I'm not there yet. I want to be at 220. In the evening. Sure. 
you know so and then i'm i'm already i'm, I, I'm it's just the only thing that pisses me off is you know i like the fact that i'm losing the weight now but the only thing that pisses me off is fucking expensive if you have to buy new clothes yeah, you know? I mean, especially when you're buying suits and stuff. Yeah, because all these years, basically, all my my sports stuff was free because you sponsored by yeah. Gorilla Wear and stuff. You know, thank God Gorilla Wear's got extra large, at large, yeah. just if I'm yeah. about to talk down. <laughs> you know, it's just that the, the clothes that I have that I like to wear, mm. I look stupid wearing them now. I you know, because yeah. I look at it like you know, like it, you see the guys in the gym they wear, you know, they need to wear it large and they're wearing it in three X and, and they just want to look big in the clothes and I yeah. don't need that no more. Yeah, yeah. I really don't. I don't care. So I, I gotta, I gotta shop. And you don't want to buy the cheapest stuff. So you know, it's, it's, it, there's, there's some, you know, money coming out of the pocket. Hey, I want to ask you. I had, uh, I had Milos on my podcast the other day. We were talking about something uh, about older bodybuilders and and uh, supporting bodybuilding now. I'm just curious. Why is it that you're so you're you've been retired for a little while, but I never eleven never, years, eleven years. Yeah. No one ever hears you talk poorly about bodybuilding. Why is it some of these guys can't maintain that level of respect for the guys that are on stage? Because they're probably right. exactly what we just talked about. They just have problems that they can't realize and they can't admit that they're not the guy anymore. And, uh, and, or, 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 or the woman or whatever, you know, they just can't let go and say, listen, my time is gone. Now it's the new guys. Let's support the new guys. I'm not here to bash the sport because if I'm a fan of the sport, I got to be a fan of the athletes because they are the sport. There wouldn't be no bodybuilding without the athletes, if it's females or males. So if I'm trashing or bashing the athletes, I'm bashing the sport in general, you know? Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, and, and that's not what I'm for. I'm for, I'm, I'm you know, and, and as a coach, you don't want to bring people down. I want to, you know, I want to motivate them to do what they have to do in order to get to the, to where they want to go. You know, if you want to win shows, I can't tell you how fucking terrible you are every day. That's not going to help you to win. Yeah, you know? I mean, in, in Milos's case, I feel like he has a right to say what he wants because he actually is involved in helping. Mm -hmm. But it's the guys that are doing nothing. They're not coaching anybody. They're not helping yeah. anybody, but they're just spouting off for no reason. And I'm like, it, it's just really confusing to me because we see, I see a lot of guys who are retired, like yourself, like Jay, like... Mm -hmm. Milos, like, uh, you know, like John Meadows was retired and uh, they're still very supportive, very involved. Yeah, and, this is uh, when you still love the sport. But if you're still involved, but you don't love the sport, that's when shit like this happens. Or when like you, you said, if you're trying to if you're trying to get some for yourself or you can't get past your own. Right. E your past your own ego, maybe. Yeah. If you can't get past the point that when you walk somewhere and people don't stop you no more for asking for pictures. You know, that's a different life. I mean, you know, get used to it. That's, about, that's yeah. what I tell people, you know. I mean, just get used to it. You know, it happens, you know. Yeah. So, let me, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So, you, you just mentioned the guys, Nathan, Samson. Oh, by the way, before I forget. Yeah. Right. I have the, uh, I'm, I'm going to say something now that's not okay. confirmed, but okay. I can talk about it. Okay. There's a very high chance... Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps saying it. My hair, look at my hair. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna say? Are you gonna say what are you gonna say? I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm gonna say. And and this is gonna be confirmed tomorrow, and then it's gonna be official, hopefully. That me and you will be broadcasting, possibly, possibly broadcasting. Possibly. I don't hate that word. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm I'm gonna say possibly because you know there's some we have to obviously make do, do some have a conversation and you know make sure everybody's on the same page. That yeah. me and you are going to be broadcasting the Arnold Classic in 2022, yes. which yes. I believe will be a change that the people are going to, you know, they, they're going to love it because, you know, I think there's going to be, um, I don't know. I don't want to say too much, yeah. but I think the chemistry that we have and the way we think about the sport of bodybuilding yeah. will be a benefit for uh, a, a, a booth, you know, to broadcast any shows. I'm trying not to get too excited. The Don't get too excited. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just telling you because there's a chance, you know. And you know, we, we talked about it, and then we're gonna have a call tomorrow, you know. Yeah. And 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 then we'll determine. And I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. To be honest, is this gonna be in the podcast, or are you gonna edit this out? No, this is gonna be in the podcast. All right, all right. You know, does so, that mean I gotta get a suit now? Do I gotta get a no, suit? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. You know, first, you, know, you already have a suit. Come on. People always ask how I got here. 
I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. I mean, if they if they approve. I got plenty of suits that I can't wear. You can have them, all of them. <laughs> Okay, I'll take your, your hand-me-down. I got to, I, hey, listen, tell me what your weight is. I got the suits for it. Okay. Because I drop 10 pounds every two years, and I got yeah, suits yeah. For, every, every, for every poundage. <laughs> so, no, I think it's just going to be, you know, because, you know, I, I, we've talked about this before, and, you know, and, and, and I think it's going to be something that the people wanted to see. Yeah. You know, I put your That's name amazing, out, I put your name out there. I said this is, I would be most comfortable to do it yeah. with you because I know how you are and, 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 yeah. and what you do. And what you're saying, I think that the uh, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be great. I'm That's really amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a three day yeah. event. Like I said, I'm not going to get too excited, but we should talk about. Do we know who's doing the Arnold? Say what? Do we know who's doing the Arnold? No, not really. I mean, I I, I it's going to be one of those one of the Arnolds where, you know, uh, it's going to be a breakthrough show for some newer guys. I think I think I mentioned this to somebody. I think I, I think it was me and you were talking. I mentioned Hunter. I think this this would be the perfect opportunity for Hunter yeah. to solidify his top five. Well, he was fourth, but to solidify himself at the very top. Because if he can win an Arnold, that puts himself in that category yeah. and also puts him in line for the Olympia again to stay in that fourth spot or yeah. higher. But it also going to be a chance for others to break through and 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 and, and prove a point because. You know the price money is up. It's two hundred thousand first, one thirty second, and I think seventy five third. So that alone would <laughs> wake a is lot. Is there of, any is there any chance that Romney would do the show? Or is uh, no, for, for twenty two. No, twenty twenty two. Definitely, definitely not. There's no no, no chance at all. I wonder um, if Hottie could get, <clears throat> if Hottie could get back because Hottie would be, or even Brandon. I mean, that's another awesome. Comp. Yeah, I mean, this would be you know, of course. I mean, and, and William, is, from what I heard, William said he's not going to do it. But let's see when they know about the prize money. Maybe it changes their minds because at the end of the day, listen, you're a professional bodybuilder. This is what you do. Yeah. And you know, hey, listen, and and, and this year, or next year, the Olympia's in December, which means if you compete in March, it gives you another nine months. You have a time yeah. to recover. You have time for a little bit of off season, and you have yeah. time for another diet. So it's not even like you know, because people say you can't peak twice a year. This is nine yeah. months. Yeah. This was about the same time we had from last year's Olympia to this year's Olympia, almost yeah. almost the same. So I think yeah. this is a great, great chance for guys like Regan, you know, yeah. Samson, but Nathan. I'm, but I'm thinking more of the top guys that. Because what was the prize money last year? One thirty. One thirty first, seventy five second. And now it's how much? Two hundred first, one thirty second. Yeah, if I'm Brandon, I think to myself, I'm the second best guy in the world. I walk in, I take home two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I, that, I, I would probably, f I feel the same. But then again, I think Brandon might think, listen, I want to get that title back next year, so I'm going to put everything into that show. Very possible see, that he thinks that way. See, for someone like Samson, I think to myself. Samson could be very dangerous, but he needs more muscle. And I feel like do you think so? Yeah, he's because he's six. I think he's six one. But but he's full and he's round. I, I, listen, I think it, but if you I don't stand he, next to the top guys, how do you know? How, how do you say he needs? No, but more? I'm assuming like let's say that Arnold shows up and let's say William decides to do it. Let's say Hunter does it. Um, you know, Ian Nick. Nick's guys. not. Nick's already addressed. He's not. You know, Nick's not doing it. Yeah, Nick's probably just going to go straight for the Olympia. But yeah. I'm just saying, if, if if some of these top guys do show up, like even like a Sergio or, you know, I still think Samson needs more size to to stand with those guys, mm. especially from the back. I think his back needs to be a little bit bigger. I think with Milos helping him for a whole year, I think he's going to put that size on. But I think if he interrupts it in the next month. To just start dieting because he just stopped dieting now. Like he just did his last show two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's had no time to rest, no off season, no anything. But so if he uses to... the rebound right now the right way, which I know Milos is very good at, but he, I think he, he can put on it. five pounds and be five pounds bigger at the at the Arnold. Yeah, but imagine even health wise though, right? Like he's been dieting for X amount of time, and then he did like four shows back to back. Mm. So even all oh, right, he competed time. four times. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, because he did the Arnold UK. Then he did, I think, Prague, 
the lead, the Egypt show, and then he finished. In Romania. Through, Romania, yeah. So yeah. he did like four shows. Yeah, that's crazy. And, uh, but that's that's I, what we used to do, man. We used to do four or six shows back to back to back to back. Yeah, but that's if you're big enough. Like if Samson had all the muscle he needed, I would agree with you 100%. But yeah. I feel like if he wants to make an impact at the Olympia, then he needs the time to put on. Yeah, but think about this, though. You, you don't think he's good enough to compete at the Arnold in a, in a, in a lineup without the top Olympians? Are we saying, who are we saying is showing up? Everybody except Rami. Let's say the top Olympians are not in the show, which the are not. Because let's say top, Rami's top not doing it. Let's say if Brandon is not doing it, if, if um, Hardy's, uh, not, Hardy's doing not doing it. If, Everybody uh, else is in. And other than maybe Hunter. Maybe Hunter's doing it. Let's say Hunter's doing it. Okay. I don't know if he is, but I heard somewhere that he... I don't think... Listen, I love Samson. I think his physique is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I think when he stands next to guys who are bigger, like... Uh, Hunter, even Steve Kuklo, Sergio, Akeem, they might expose the fact that he's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, uh, I didn't. Because I think, because I think like this, like Samson just lost to Raphael, and even though Raphael is a beautiful physique, Raphael only weighs like two forty or or even I don't know if he weighs even less than that, but he's not an overly big guy. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if he's standing next to a Sergio who weighs two sixty on stage, I'm just guessing, but. It might be. <laughs> don't, don't, don't piss off Sergio. <laughs> That's why I said I'm just guessing. I don't want to. <laughs> he's really like no. 270. Yeah. I'll get a phone call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I had it with him. No, I think he's heavy on stage. He's heavy. I think he's in the 70s somewhere. But that, I think that, that's what he said. No. So Regardless, that's what, the point don't, is the same. Don't say 260, because I said it because <laughs> okay. I said it to Sergio, and I love the guy. Listen, when he was, <laughs> when he was here in Arizona, you know, yeah. we were posing and we were posing, and I asked him, I said, how much you weighed? I said, I think it was like 287. Okay. And, and then I was like, okay, so I guess you'd be, be in the 60s somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and that didn't, he, didn't, he didn't like that. He's like, no, I was 275 last year. I wouldn't be any less. I yeah. said, okay, all right. So, you know, I was, I was guessing too, you know. Okay, so. I say corrected, 270s. <laughs> so, <laughs> the point, the Sergio, point don't is take the that. Don't take that personal. We, we love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think I really want to, uh, I guess it's my own personal uh, wish. I really want to see Samson put on five or 10 pounds of solid tissue and do the Olympia and really see how he does the Olympia. And then would he, he listen to you? Would he listen to you or would he listen to Milos? No, no. We like me and him talk on a friendly basis, but I, I think he's taking his advice from Milos for sure. Yeah. Like he would always, you, would you, knows. would you disagree with it? Would you tell him, would you try to convince him not to do it? No, I don't treat my athletes like that. I, okay. I'm always here just to listen and help if they ask me, mm -hmm. but I don't ever tell them what to do or not to do, or like, that's not my place. Like they, it's their career. And I think they should do what they think is right. And if they ask my opinion, I tell them my honest opinion. And if they don't mm -hmm. take it, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. But, but no, I try and be, I try and be like the guy who's been around just to yeah. give them advice. If like they have other sponsors, like clothing sponsors or something that calls them, um, I try and be the guy that gives them some advice that way, but never yeah. like get in their way at all. How long have you been doing the supplements? Uh, we're going on two years. And two years only? Yeah, I think we're two and a half years in. Two okay. and a half years. And, and, and you're doing well. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing, we've met all our goals so far. Like we actually, ex we exceeded our goals the first year. Uh, the second so year. So where are you selling just in Canada? We don't even sell in Canada. Oh, you don't even sell in Canada. Oh. Yeah, that's actually, it's funny. A lot of people are confused about that because I'm Canadian. But So I'll just explain really quickly. We are manufactured, shipped, and registered all within the U.S. We, are, we aren't launched. In, we, ship, we ship from the U.S. to other countries, but we aren't launched in any other countries at the moment. We're just in the U.S. Oh, wow. So and you're doing good in people, the U.S. market. Um, yeah, everything we do is in the U.S. And Canadian fans sometimes get upset and they ask why I did that. And I say to them, my fan base is 80% in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And this is a really, it's a really saturated market. I mean, you know, you've, you've had, you have your supplement company and uh, I'm like, if we're going to have any chance of surviving, we have to be in the biggest market. So we launched in the U.S. and we're registered in the U.S. We ship in the U.S. Everything's in the U.S. right now. Mm. And then as we get bigger, we'll start to launch into other markets like the U.K., Canada, right. Australia. 
and go from there. But right now, my main focus is just growing the business in the U.S. And then as we can expand, we'll expand out further. Yeah, but it's good to see that you, you know, you sign an athlete. So you you have the, you know, you able to be able to yeah. sign athletes means that you got to do really well. So and I, I'm, I'm happy to see that because you don't yeah, see that it, too often. You it see, makes got, me feel good to be able to sign the athletes because I, you know, I mean, being an athlete myself, it kind of feels good to be able to like bring an athlete on and pay them a salary. Yeah. And, so when you bring an athlete on, that's just curious. If you bring an athlete on, you know, yeah. let's say you're paying, let's say I'm going to just throw a number out, 50000 a year. Yeah. Is that like a tax write-off? I just stay out of the numbers. <laughs> you don't we even know? A, we, have a, we have a financial offer. Well, I'm sure it is, obviously, because we're paying, an, we're paying a salary. So we're right. able to write par- a portion of that off. But we have a financial officer. We have a CFO and we have our accountant that does all the numbers. I don't get involved in all that. Oh, okay. So is so are you alone or do you have you a partner with someone? No, it's me and my wife. My, so I'm the I'm the CEO of the company. And your wife is the boss, the president. My wife is the CEO. No. <laughs> the C- <laughs> my wife is a CMO, so chief marketing officer. And my brother is a CFO, the C, the ch- chief financial officer. Oh, okay. So the okay. three of the three of us own the business. Yeah. And uh, we don't have a CEO, so we no one reports to anybody else. We're all kind of even. And when it comes to athletes, I choose the athletes. I decide what we're going to pay them. I decide when we're going to cut them. Um, how hard? How is, hard is it? Have you ever cut someone? I've cut a couple guys. Yeah. So how hard is it to cut an athlete? You know, knowing <laughs> you've been in the shoes before. You you know. How hard is it? Yeah. What what makes you decide, you know, that late night it's time to cut him? I got to get rid of him. Well, it's it's sometimes it's very hard and sometimes it's very easy. We had one athlete that came on that wasn't even an athlete. He was kind of an ambassador. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a, actually a really funny story. So we send out graphics to all our athletes when we have a sale or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, post this. Everybody post this graphic for today, right? And he messaged me back. He goes, I don't want to post it. And I'm like it's part of your contract you don't really have a choice he's like oh, i don't i don't like that kind of marketing i don't want to post it on my page well i said okay well it's you can leave if you don't want to post it you can just you know take the exit like that's fine he's like okay i think i'm gonna leave i'm like okay <laughs> so that was it yeah. scrapped it scrapped it gone he moved on that one didn't bother me because i'm like it just seemed absolutely ridiculous yeah right? he, so, it looked like he was looking but, for a way out anyways no he had only been with us for two weeks or something like that oh <laughs> he just he just literally didn't like to post graphics. He's like, it's going to ruin my Instagram. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Just, oh, so he had like millions and millions of followers, and he think no, no, he didn't even have. He only had like ten thousand followers. What, what made <laughs> you? What made you? What made you choose him to be an athlete, or or, or an ambassador it, for? It, it, it's a long story. I thought he had a kid. The kid was potential that loved bodybuilding, and I thought he was going to be something. And, so you're trying to help out. Yeah, and I think. You know, I think some of these kids just don't know really what it's about. They mm-hmm. don't know that it's a, it's the give and take. And I just, I gave him a full opportunity to stay on board and do the, do the right thing. And he chose the other way. So yeah. he, I had to let him go and he moved on. That one didn't bother me at all because I knew I was in the right. But sometimes when it's financial, you know, you have a guy, you're paying him X amount of dollars, but he's not bringing in anything in sales, right? Like also you give out like discount codes and stuff. So every athlete has to, we have to be able to track the athlete somehow. So let's say you're paying somebody $5,000 a month. I have to know that he's going to be able to bring back one or two times that amount in return, mm-hmm. right? So if you're paying somebody $5,000 a month, but they're only bringing in $500 in sales, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't keep paying the athlete $5,000 a month, month after month after month after month for year for a year if they're only bringing in $500 a month in sales. So you have, an, you have a talk with the guy, Hey, this is what your sales numbers look like. You're not posting enough, blah, blah, blah. Give them an opportunity. Give them a second opportunity. If things still don't change and the third time, I just have to say, look, you can stay for less money or you can leave. Yeah. And then I give them the option that way. Yeah. So it, it's just sometimes it comes down to a numbers thing and it really, really sucks. Like it doesn't yeah. make, doesn't feel good to have to have that conversation, but but if it's you want to make a business, you have to, yeah, you have to, you have to, certain things you just got to do. There's no way around it. And I, I feel the same. I, I would have a hard time telling somebody no, because I've been in the shoes. That's I've been why. in the shoes. I've been in situations where, you know, where you have the contract. Let's say you have a one year contract and you get to the 10 months time, yeah. you know, two months out. Then, you know, you too fucking worried to ask if, are you going to extend? And you don't yeah, hear yeah, back yeah. from them. And, you know, it's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. 
Well, the one thing that's good is I have a good relationship with all the athletes. So they can call me anytime and say, Hey, are you extending my contract? You're not, I'm always very like in contact with them. So mm -hmm. I don't think any of the athletes are scared to call me or text me or any of anything like that. So that I, I, I like, but because I was an athlete, like for one example, like I had, to, I had to let one athlete go, but I made sure I waited. We paid him for an extra three months because I knew he was prepping. Oh, okay. So that's like the athlete in me saying, oh man, this guy started a diet. I don't want to like, let him go now. He's got to finish his prep. Mm -hmm. So I kept him on until his show was done. And then even a month after that, and then I was like, okay, we have to, we have to make, we have to do something here. Yeah. So it's not easy being, doing that kind of shit. Cause you always want to be the guy that just keeps everybody on and pays them forever. And, but that's not really like a realistic way to run a business. Yeah. So, you know, that's the, that's the shitty part of, of what I have to do. So yeah. it's part of it. Let's talk about the yeah. good thing, bodybuilding. Yeah, what do you yeah. want to talk about? Yeah, let's talk about, we haven't, we haven't even talked since, since the Olympia, about the yeah. Olympia, or about the shows after the Olympia. Oh, there's one thing I want to talk to you about. Um, so I, I, don't know, I saw it somewhere, I don't know where. Somebody brought that up about um, um, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan being bitter because he got third or fourth, what, what did he get, third or fourth? Nathan got fourth in Prague. And it's funny, I, I, I actually had him, it's, this, uh, it's tough. So I did the commentary for that show. Oh, and so you were, MC, uh, you were commentating the show, okay. I didn't, I, I was supposed to fly to Prague, but then I wasn't able to because I went to Dallas and then I came here and then I can't fly back out of the country after, because I had to isolate mm -hmm. or quarantine, right? In, in, so, in Canada. Yeah, so I did it remotely. So we just did it like online. I did the commentary with uh, Melissa Bumstead. It was fun. It was good. I think I think people that did listen to it said they were happy with it. Um, but at prejudging, I was really impressed by Samson. Even though I thought Nathan was going to win because of past shows and he was really dry and hard, I was really impressed with how Samson looked. I kept my eye kept going to him. Mm -hmm. But then when I did the, the prejudging wrap up, I said, you know what? I'm going to give it to, Sam, to Nathan. Nathan's just harder than everybody. He's more strided. He's drier. So how did he and, end up in fourth? I don't. The only thing I could think is Samson looked, or not Samson, sorry. Nathan looked a little smaller on stage than everybody else. Now, I don't know if that's the camera because I know Nathan isn't smaller than everybody else, but Regan and uh Samson especially not as much Raphael but Regan and Samson just looked like more structurally bigger not necessarily muscularity mm -hmm. but just taller wider guys and that's the only thing I could think that would make the difference up because Nathan was drier and harder than everybody else really and yeah I, I was, didn't see the show so he was the only guy on stage not sweating he didn't fade muscles were full and I honestly thought he was going to get his 10th pro win <clears throat> and then after the night show, I thought, you know, prejudging, I was like iffy. Night show, I thought, I think Nathan's going to walk away with this because Samson started to fade a little bit at the end and Regan definitely faded at night. And then he ended up in fourth. And I think it was kind of a shock to everybody. So that caught you off guard too then? It caught me off guard too, yeah. I, I actually was like, yeah, a little bit shocked that they didn't pay. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, are you thinking that because Nathan won three shows previously? Or is Nathan actually better? So the one thing I can say is structurally and flow of physique, Samson, I, I think is better. Muscularity and condition, I think Nathan is better. Mm -hmm. So I guess you have to be there to really be able to judge when yeah. the two guys are like that close, right? But that, 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 well, then, then it's understandable why he was a little pissed that he ends yeah. up in fourth when he probably had in his mind, like, worst case scenario, I get second. But I also wonder when other people are watching, are they also thinking Nathan's going to win because he's won three previous shows? Oh, well, I did, or, well, you should, or are they should, actually seeing what's on stage? Yeah, I mean, right? you, you should judge what you see on stage, of course. But I'm just saying, like, even in my mind, right? Because yeah. like I said, after prejudging, I was really impressed with Samson. But in my mind, um, like human nature kicked in. And I was like, well, Nathan already beat Samson like two or three other times. They're probably going to give it. And Nathan's drier and more conditioned. They're probably going to give it to Nathan. So your mind kind of goes that way, even though maybe it wouldn't if you were there sitting there. 
So, so, so I don't know. So does that mean that Rafael just came out of nowhere all of a sudden? To me, to me, Rafael, to me, I definitely, and this is no knock on Rafael. I think he's got a beautiful physique, but to beautiful. me, Rafael was fourth. Like the way I had it was uh, Nathan, Samson, Regan, Raphael. Hmm. That's how I, that's how I had the show. That's and it ended up all, all kind of reverse because it ended up Samson, um, Raphael, Regan, and then Nathan. No, Raphael won. No, not Prague. Raphael won Romania. Oh, he won Romania. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. So Samson won. Samson Prague. won Prague. Uh, you're right, yeah. Right. So uh, Nathan was pissed and he's made a couple of videos and posts about it. And I don't know. I guess you can't blame somebody. It doesn't, I don't like it personally because they're on the same, they're both my guys. So I'm like, hey, you know, and you should probably maintain a little bit of like, respect for your at like your teammate mm -hmm. and i don't think samson ever posted anything bad when nathan beat him so i kind of felt like hey maybe you should take it easy a bit but well did he but, but did he did he say something about samson or i mean he got fourth i mean there was three no, guys he was just saying he got robbed period he didn't yeah. he didn't like he was just upset with the placing period he didn't say anything specifically about samson i just do you think it I, do you think it's good to do videos like this you know talking about being robbed because in, in the end you know you think it can hurt him I don't know if the judges care. It's just something, nothing, something I never did. Yeah, I don't think it's, it, I don't think it does anything. It doesn't help anything. Well, you can like, you can think it. You can talk to yeah. friends about it, but I don't know if I would put it out open in the public that I got robbed. But so, Nathan, I mean, that's you know one of the things that maybe hurts somebody is also some, the thing we love about somebody. Like Nathan's a very outspoken person. Mm, yeah. So pe people love that about Nathan that he speaks his mind. He says whatever he wants to say. Maybe sometimes it's too far, but you know when someone's like that, they're gonna say the good and the bad, and whatever they want. So, who was head judging uh, Proc? You know, Steve. Steve Weimer. was head judging. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you, if, I mean, if, if we're if we're talking if we're talking politically, I don't know if the judges actually care, but I would think to myself, it's probably not a good idea to put out that kind of stuff and. You know, you're kind of bad mouthing the judges in a way, and then you got to stand in front of those judge, judges again next year they're not going to be very happy about it. So yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. But like I said, Nathan's his own man and he does whatever he wants. Yeah. Can't really, can't really tell him. What Did you talk to him? Did you talk to him about it though? I talked to Nathan about it he, and he wasn't happy. And I, I don't blame him. Like he was going for his 10th win. He was in, I thought arguably he was in the best shape of the year. Like mm. it, it looked like his best condition and. But you go, and, but you going off the screen though. Yeah, I'm going off. Obviously I'm going off photos, yeah. but I, I photos and video, but I thought like to me, he looked yeah, the best combination of fullness and conditioning. I mean, he said it, he said it himself. From what I heard, I heard a short interview where he said himself that you uh, know that was the that was the best ever. Yeah, he did. You he know? did. I, I thought he did. But yeah. you know, it's funny. Samson's never he's lost to him, but he's never really been that far behind because Samson actually beat him at the prejudging at the Arnold UK. Okay, so it was close. So it was close. So I think they've been close all the way through. So I don't know what it was that put Samson over. In Prague, I don't know if it's just because it was different judges or something. They saw something different. Maybe Samson was better. I don't know. Maybe sometimes, but, maybe sometimes the judges, and I don't know if it's true, but I'm just, I'm just speculating right now. Maybe sometimes the judges think, you know, everybody's qualified. This is really, really close. So maybe yeah, let this guy go to the Olympia. He deserves yeah. it. He did four shows. He deserved it. And, and listen, yeah. Samson totally deserved to win yeah. a show to qualify for the Olympia because I think he will be. And tremendous asset to the Olympia stage because he has, and I like his physique. I like the way he looks. I like the way he poses. I like I like everything about this guy. That's why I'm yeah. I, I'm, I'm I don't see, you know. I mean I, I haven't studied his physique now size wise because I've never seen him in person. So you know because you said you think he needs to be bigger. I, I think I, just to, I think just to clarify that I think it's just the back. I feel like he needs because hmm. him and John when they were working together in the off season they did some good work on his back and his hmm. back came up a little bit. I think his back needs to come up a little bit more to stand with some of these top guys yeah. you know, that are that are there. But I see that argument to me would be totally fair if Nathan was second. Yeah. Because then I'd say, okay, well, Samson won. They want to move Samson on. They put Nathan in second. But Nathan was all the way in fourth, and I just didn't see him in fourth. I was like, I can't. I and mean, he'll probably lost out on a little bit of money too. That's I mean that would probably piss me off. <laughs> well, yeah, because Prague was uh, Prague was bigger prize money too. Plus yes. he gets a bonus. He gets a bonus from the company. Yeah. So I mean that probably bothered him as well. I think the prize money there was thirty five grand, maybe. I think. Or I think I it's forty five. 
Yeah, yeah. So it was a bigger show to win. I think it's 40. F- Wait a minute. It's, See, it's I a- think this is the thing. I think Samson and Nathan have been so close all along. If it would have been, oh, they gave it to Samson over Nathan at that show, and Nathan was second. I don't think anybody could com- like would complain because they've been close. He probably maybe- wouldn't. He probably would have never complained if he got if he would have got second. Yeah, but fourth was just a strange. I yeah. didn't see that, especially because I think Regan faded a bit at the night show. Yeah, it's it. You know what? But isn't isn't that the right time to ask Steve as a head judge? You know, for feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if Nathan does that. I don't. I don't yeah, but this is the this is because you you really need to know because yeah. something must have happened. That they, uh, you know, all of a sudden have you in yeah. fourth. I mean, you know, yeah. that, that's when I would literally go ask. I said, listen, what was it? Why did I drop down to fourth? How did what I do I need to far, fix? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if, yeah, if you don't know, you might make the same mistake. Whatever it is, I don't know. Yeah, the only thing, it's weird. You know, Sam, Nathan has really got a different personality than a lot of us. I think he, Nathan's like the Mike Tyson of bodybuilding. <laughs> just doesn't he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum he doesn't like kind of do what we all the rest of us do he's kind of goes in does the work and leaves he's not really the guy to stand around i i don't see nathan as being the guy to stand around and ask a judge why he plays where he plays i just he's very he's very different he's got his own personality yeah. he just kind of marches to his own beat so, I know, but certain things will help, you know, for the future. Oh, don't I? I agree with you 100. No. percent I like you know staying around and asking a judge, like, because that's a big. You don't gap, even have right? to stay around. I mean, give him a call the next day, next week, two weeks later. Now, you know, I said, Steve, listen, I, I, you know, you head judged. Please give me some feedback on on on, on Park. Yeah. It's not, you know, but I mean, probably now is not the best time, you know, after you make a video saying I was robbed. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. now I mean, maybe, maybe 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 it's not the best thing to do, but that would have been. Was Tyler there too? I don't know if Tyler was there. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure who. Yeah. I don't know. I really, I would there. really, I would ask, you know, you know, just yeah. like, hey, listen, what was it? You know, what, what, what did I do? Did I step to the left too far? Did I step to the right? Did I step mm-hmm. before in front of the line? What did I do? Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know how much judges care about that stuff. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they Steve don't. Steve cares. Make... Steve cares. Yeah. You ask Steve, yeah. he'll give you feedback. He, he no, I don't mean, I don't mean feedback. I mean, like, I don't know if they care about the video. Like, do they just brush it away, like, oh, big deal, or do they care? I don't. I don't know, think but... it's. I, it's not a huge deal, but yeah. it's you know you expect the top tier athletes to respect the judges no matter what because we 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 do i have to be pro league in yeah, fact if i go and make a video i said i was robbed i'm basically trashing the judges mainly the head yeah. judge who makes the ultimate decision you know what yeah. i mean and i wouldn't do that video before i would have asked for feedback yeah I said what yeah. was it and if i don't agree with the judge then i can voice my maybe, opinion maybe he did ask for feedback i don't i don't know i didn't i didn't ask him that question so mm. maybe he did ask for feedback maybe he didn't uh, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that would ask for feedback, but Samson su- or Nathan surprised me other times with other things that he does. So maybe he <laughs> asked the judge, and I don't know, right? Like yeah. maybe, maybe he already did. I don't know that, but regardless, I think he's going to come back with a vengeance. Like I think, yeah, well, when well. he does when he does step back on stage again, he's probably going to be bigger, better, and want to prove himself even more. So now he's moving to Kuwait. Somebody, yeah, somebody I, mentioned. I yeah, I heard he's moving to Kuwait. I, I don't know if he's staying there all year or what. I haven't really talked to him about some, it. But, some, uh, somewhere they posted a video. I don't, I don't, I don't remember nine names, but they posted a video. That he said he's moving to Kuwait permanent. Yeah, I mean, if the same thing works for Brandon, if, that, if it works but for if, Nathan, But uh, he's tried that before, though. He's been there before. It's not the first time. Yeah. You know, the one thing I know about Nathan is he likes, I mean, he loves his kids and he seems to ha- like hanging out with his friends a lot. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like he, it's weird that he's going to go to Kuwait and stay there because maybe he's going to travel back and forth. I don't know. Well, he, he but, said he's going to move. I mean, I, I mean, that was a source said he's going to move permanently to uh, Kuwait. And I was oh, like, he's moved, I was he surprised that kids? he, I was surprised he went back to Kuwait to begin with because I know he's been there and I had a conversation with him. You know, mm-hmm. after he left, you know, and I didn't think that was ever going to happen again. But, um, you know, I guess he found another formula. And, you know, I, I just want to see him do well because he has all the tools in the world to be well, really, I mean, to be great. It's weird because this one loss is like, I feel I feel like he shouldn't even highlighted it because he had an amazing year. Like yeah. he won three shows. He yeah. won three shows. Yeah, he took fourth at the fourth one. But so what? Like, 
you won three shows back to back. Like yeah. that should the highlight of your year shouldn't be that you missed one. It should be that you won three shows back to back. Yeah. Yeah. So he had an amazing year and he's going to continue to get better. So I, I don't think it's a big deal that he, I think it's a bigger deal to him than it is in actuality that he yeah. missed out on one show. Does he have, does he have to work on some visa issues to get here? Uh, as far as I know, he hasn't taken care of. It's all taken he, care of. Yeah. As far as I know, he's going to be good to travel and he's okay to get into the U S and he's got no issue with that at all. So okay. as far, as far as I know, he he'll be good for the Olympia and, Uh, I don't know. Is if he, he is it, you think he's going to do a show before the Olympia? I'd like to see him do the Arnolds. Do you want to see him do the Arnolds? I'd like to see him do the Arnolds. Mm. I think Nathan is one of those guys that can, you're talking about breakthroughs. True. And, it, and it's weird, even though Nathan's won like nine shows and he has a big fan base, I still feel like people in America forget about Nathan being one of the top 10 or top eight or top six Olympians. Because I think yeah. if Nathan did the Olympia, he would have been in the top eight, top six. Probably, so, possibly higher. Yeah, I know. I think saying. Nathan fared very well with guys like uh, Hunter, uh, Nick. I yeah. mean, come on. I mean, uh, uh, this, no, no, that's this, right. I'm just being conservative, right? Yeah. I'm saying like top six. No, top I mean, eight. Th he could be all the way up into the top four. Yeah, that's right. Possibly so top feel, three. But if you're saying that, and it's weird because even as good as he is, I still don't feel like people in America, when, when the conversation of the top six come up, I don't feel like his name is ever there. So I feel like because it, it kind get, of felt like he was gone for a while. I know, I know, but I I also think it's because he he's not like a big social media guy and stuff. But now he's got a YouTube channel and everything, so I think that's going to change. But also, I think if he were to step into the Arnolds and win, or even be in the top three, it would help open up that fan base even more for when yeah. he did get to the Olympia. Well, it's probably <laughs> this is this is uh, this is my opinion. And people have a hard time understanding what he's saying. With his, with That's his true, yeah. heavy Liverpool, I think Liverpool, he's from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. The accent yeah. is, I sometimes don't understand yeah. him, especially when he, goes, <laughs> when he goes off. When he's fast, yeah. I, I, I don't get it. I can't understand it. I'm trying with all, but everything. I'm just like, what the fuck is he saying? You know, <laughs> it's so hard to understand. I, I'm good with him now because I had him on the podcast a few times. So I kind of so you had, now. But you had the same problem in the beginning? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, like I, I was like, I was happy because he would send me voice notes sometimes, <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, had to listen to him like four times. And you can't see his lips. <laughs> <laughs> But then, then other time, other times he would text me. I'm like, okay, this is good. I can read it. Right? So, yeah. so no, I think I think everybody has a little bit of trouble with Nathan's accent. But uh, if you if you're If you listen to him a few times, you start to catch on. Yeah, to the, of course, of course. Point. You know, if you yeah yeah, but you know, if he if he's relaxed and he's not. Super yeah. fast because when he's excited, yeah. he speaks fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. then if, you, I, if you've never heard him before, yeah, and you try and watch one of his videos, you're like, what the fuck? What language? <laughs> what language is it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nathan, we still love you, brother. Don't worry about yeah. it. We're just making fun of your accent, Liverpool, because no, there's another guy in Liverpool that I watch, uh, Darren Till, who has the same yeah. accent. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> no, Nathan, Nathan's not sensitive, man. I don't yeah. think he cares. Yeah. Um, but no, I think. Uh, I think the Arnold's would be a good show for him if he did it. I think there's a, a it could be a big breakout for him if he won that show. I mean, I know he won the Arnold UK, but everybody knows the Arnold US is the Arnold. That that's the you know. that's the prestige Arnold. Yes, you know, yeah. and hey, and 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 you know, and you get to see Arnold, you get the the trophy from Arnold. That's a it's like it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah. So, so I believe Nathan. Then Nathan, Nathan will be one of the favorites going into the show. I think. Yeah. I'm excited to see Sergio come back too. I think, I don't know if he's doing the Arnolds, but I thought Sergio missed the mark a little bit at the Olympia. And I think. No, I, not the I, Olympia, I, at the Legion. At the, at the Le Arnold. No. Sergio Which, did the Arnold and then the Legion. He didn't do the Olympia. That's right. That's right. The Arnold. That's right. The Arnold. Yeah. The Arnold's the show I was thinking about. So I felt like he missed the mark a little bit, but I was really hoping to see him at his best because I think, I think Sergio can compete with anybody. Almost anybody, on, anybody. Uh, almost anybody on stage when he's at his best. Yeah. Yeah, and I talked to him. I had a conversation with him not too long ago, and then he said, you know, he figured out what what the problem was. You know, what was it? It's an issue. Some food, some foods just don't do well with him. Don't agree you with know? him. Yeah. So now yeah. he figured that out, and so you know, I think he has the game. But, but I don't remember if we talked about him doing the Arnold or not. But that, yeah, yeah people, he would be. Of course, he would be a top guy going into the Arnold. Yeah, people don't think people don't think about that, and I, even I don't think about that sometimes, even though it's happened to me. If you carb load with a food you're not used to, you can end up looking distended on on stage even yeah. though it's just from one food that you ate exactly and that and that's the problem he had you know and, and he yeah. realized that you know and it, that's got to be fucking 
I know, I know myself. It's the, the worst. When you diet, you suffer, you do everything you're supposed to do, and then you mess it up with a, a single meal, possibly you know one did? single meal that's going to mess you up, stick your stomach out, and you can't control it. You know what I did? So I was doing potatoes. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I need more calories. I want to fill out more. You know, when you're in, you're like, you're just not in the right frame of mind. And, and John was, I think John was in meetings that Arnold, because mm -hmm. he had just launched Granite. <clears throat> so I added coconut oil to my potatoes. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. And fucking my stomach was out to here. Yeah, from, the, the, from the coconut oil? I think the mix of the coconut oil with the potatoes just didn't sit well with me. Yeah. And I got back to finals at that Arnold and my stomach, I could not, I could just could not pull it in. So that's the worst when you already go there, you know, you're going there, you're warming up and you already know this is not going to work. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> this is the worst. You already know. Oh boy. I said, well, how am I going to do this? I had this issue every time, every time. And I had to go on stage and, you know, and I tell myself and I try, I try to practice. I said, suck it in, suck it in, you know, and you suck it in and you do it perfectly fine backstage. Yeah, yeah, but once you get out there and the adrenaline and then and then the it's nerves tired and, and, shit. and then you, you think you still suck it, but you can feel it's tightening up <laughs> on you. <laughs> it's getting oh damn! And then you look at the picture; it's like oh man. The worst, the worst is when you think you're sucking it in in your head, and it, in your head it looks like a vacuum. Yeah, from down from you, from you look down, you say, I can't yeah. see my belly, so it's good. <laughs> Then you see the photos and it's like, okay. I know, here. bro. I hated, I hated it so much, man. I hated it so much. I wish I could, you know, right now, I can do a vacuum. Can you really? Yes. I still can't do it. But well, it's not like, not like Arnold. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can bring so it in. I can bring it in to the point where it's, it's, it's literally in. But so it's not a vacuum. It's just flat. No, no. It's, 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 uh, it it's goes, going it in. It goes in a bit. It's go, it goes in a bit, a, 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 quite a bit. It's like a Jay Cutler vacuum. No, I think no, a little more, especially little in the, more? especially when I wake up in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Did you practice it, or does it just happen? No, it's just you know what I practice. I practice after I retired. I practice what I should have practiced before. When you're, <laughs> <laughs> I just kept my stomach in all the time. I kept doing yeah. a, trying to do a vacuum. Right now, I'm sitting here with you. I've been trying to do a vacuum holding the whole in, time. Yeah. Just hold it in and talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm basically right now doing what I supposed to do 20 years ago, and I didn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always told myself practice it, and then you push it out. There's a like, yeah, you know, six months out, three months out. All right, I'll do it there yeah, next month. I will start next month. Right, posing, right. posing, posing, and at the end of the day, we're two weeks out from the show, two days out from the show, and I haven't like, practiced yet. Yeah, no, I would start two days out. I'd be like, okay, I'm two days out. I better. I don't do even some do some vacuums. <laughs> I don't. Even, I wouldn't have a routine. I never in my life had a routine. I did a couple times. And never. Then I got, I got into a pattern. All I do is get the songs, and if yeah, I get the you songs, all that pop and lock shit. Yeah, but no, but not just. I couldn't even get the songs two weeks out, the three weeks or more, because I would change it because I would get tired of it. Yeah, I would okay. just listen to the song, and then after a week, ah, shit, change it, new one. So I will do the song like two days, day two days before the show. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, just hear it when when it, when it when it starts. You know, just I usually just would pick my music. Pray to God, please, please let me pull this off somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people do, so people can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would pick my music like two weeks out, but I would never practice my routine until I like I would just do it when I got on stage. Yeah. So. Do, do you do you think pose, uh, uh, posing like especially the mandatory is the most important thing? I wish they would score judging round uh, posing routine rounds again. The problem is like the problem is when they judge the posing round, they're going to basically go off the same body that's going to win the muscularity round. It's not about the poses Why do you that, say that you, because that's the way they look at it. No, if yes. you think about it, like Nick Walker would win the muscularity pose to Arnold, but Sergio would win the, the posing round. See, but that's a different thing. That's not posing round. That's entertainment. No, See? no, but that's what I'm talking about. So, so the posing round. I'm not talking about mandatories. I'm saying I wish they would judge the posing round again. So, well, that's why they do best poser for for yeah. that. But that's why they stopped 
judge in the posing round because at the end of the day, the body, the best body, would win the posing round. That's how they look at it. And I, I know I talked to I, I talked to them. No, no, I'm that's not. why they stopped it because it was too much controversy because people didn't understand how can Dorian Reeds win the posing round? Yeah, you know what I mean. When Sean Ray, arguably one of the best posers ever. Not yeah. not winning the posing round because they judge the physique. They still judge the physique oh, at the end posing. Not judging the actual routine. They judge the physique, not the routine. Well, they should just change the criteria to your routine. Your choreography is being judged, and that's in, why in re, in relation to your physique. Right, and that's why they do some of the shows do best poser award for that because there's no they don't want it. This there was just too much problems with the posing yeah. round. I, I brought I just, that up. I brought that up, and that's why I know. I just feel like it would make more guys try harder to put together because you know it's judging classic right and that's why those there's a routine now let's say there's five guys with an equally crazy just different style now how do you judge that well there's another issue so you have to go by the body again who has a subjective. better physique yeah so you, yeah. It's, you either way but you're you gonna have always, to you judge. can always pick you can always pick somebody like dennis wolf amazing poser I know, but you have to, right. at the end of the day, if there's four or five guys with great routines, yeah. let's say, let's put, let's put together, like Logan Franklin, Terrence Ruffin, and yeah. who else is in the, in the classic physique that has great routines? Let's say, let, uh, let's say there's three, four the, guys Chris, just like... Chris, Chris Bumstead, he's got good routines. Okay, let's say three, four guys just like yeah. that. Different styles, yeah. but everybody is spot on. Yep. How do you decide who had the best routine? Because no, even though if they do the same poses, you have to judge yeah, the but physique even, along with it. But even in that scenario, no one's ever going to have exactly the same, like, p great routine. Like Terrence Ruffin is hands down above all of them. I know, but so is Logan Franklin. Terrence Ruffin's posing routines are hands down better. No, than because and that's that's the problem. See, Th what? That, that's why we don't agree. Explain to me. That's because I believe Terrence Ruffin has a better shape. And that's why he looks better in some of the poses. No. They can do moves, the same. He moves better on stage. I, but yeah, but still, you still have to judge the poses when he, when he does them. And if somebody, I can do the same poses as, as, as Terrence Ruffin, I'll look like an idiot standing there. <laughs> as you know, with, with, but, that's why, but that's why I said your posing routine in relation to your physique. So Terrence does the poses that make his physique look the best, but it's also the, most, the best choreographed routine. That's why Terrence is the best poser in classic because mm. he knows what poses make him look good. Yeah, but it's also the best flowing f routine that's put together. the The choreography of it is the best. All right, so now, all right, this is just to win this this discussion. Let's is this say, how our is this how our like uh, our commentary is going to be? Yes. No. Let Let's just say <laughs> Logan Franklin and Terrence Ruffin both do the same exact routine, same pose, yes. same time, yes. exactly identical. Who's going to okay. win? No one. It'll be a draw. There's no draw. You got to give it first. You got to give the. the you got to give. But I'm just saying, like, let's say you're scoring. So three you choose the one who has a better physique. But yes it's or no? Gonna but it's going to happen anyway because listen, if I scored prejudging mm -hmm. and I scored finals and I scored the posing routine, mm -hmm. right? You scored symmetry, muscularity, condition, and posing, mm -hmm. right? Terrence is going to win the physique round, right? Mm -hmm. So even if they draw for posing, Terrence is still going to win. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we right? don't, we're not going anywhere with this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my whole thing is maybe maybe you're right. Maybe logistically it can't work. My whole thing is I would like the bodybuilders to have to try to put together a routine. Yeah. Offer, I think it, offer, they should offer best poser routine or most entertaining or uh, whatever posing routine and just give prize money for each show. It doesn't have to be crazy. Just Even if it's just 5 Gs or 10 Gs, that's but enough. Even when, that's enough for yep. at least half the athletes to say, let me put some effort into this to get this extra yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, that's all my, my objective is just to yeah. see guys give it a little, because I don't like it when guys come out and they just walk from one side to the other and they yeah. do a couple of most musculars and they leave. Are you talking about you know? me? <laughs> I used to, hey, I walk from one lock, side you, to the other, but at least I pop locked in between. But you pop lock all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I moonwalk to the other side of the stage. Let me bring let me bring this one this last topic up that I want to talk yeah, to you sure. about. Like, let's talk about the, uh, of course, you know, the the sad part about the sport that we had some people die, and I don't want to talk about it no more because it's been dragged into in all kind of uh, 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 media. So, what do you think? 
and I know I saw you talked about it on your show a little bit. I just wanted to yeah. bring it up again. What do you think should happen or could happen in order to uh, maybe prevent, you know, certain so, guys, you know, running into the risk of, of, you know, dying early? So I use myself as an example for this so that mm -hmm. way nobody can tell me, you know, I'm pointing fingers. Yeah. So my blood work, probably around 30. And this is one thing people don't understand about blood work. I, not everybody. Obviously, some people are probably know more than I do about blood work. But some people think blood work is a direct response to what you're taking. It's very acute. It goes up and down. If I take a shot, my blood work's going to go up. If I, once, I'm, once I'm off everything, my blood work's going to go back down, down to normal. For some things, that's true. But for other things, it's not. Sometimes when the blood work gets bad, whether you're off the cycle or on the cycle, it's still going to remain bad for an extended period of time. Right. So at 30 years old, my blood work started to trend in a negative direction, mm -hmm. right? Very, very slow. So the, the thing people don't realize, too, is a very slow process. Things start to just go slowly, slowly. And it, over the years, 31, 32, 33, you're like, ah, oh, no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. Next thing you know, you're 38 and your blood work's like, hey, this is no good. Yeah. So my suggestion was that and, and I don't think this will work and I don't think it's going to be something that they're going to do. But my suggestion was if they made athletes meet a standard of blood work three times a year before they were allowed to compete, it would make sure that everybody focused more on keeping their blood work good. Maybe they would take less orals. Maybe they would take less trend. The athletes will probably take a little less drugs to keep their blood work in check. They probably go off more often and go back on more, like less often, so they could keep their blood work in check. That was one way, and people were like, "Well, there's that liabilities." Be, and I think that will be a huge liability issue. <laughs> but, but wait a minute, is it though? Because if all they're not saying you can take drugs or not take drugs, all they're saying is, we think the who red decides, line. But who would decide that you can't compete? Who makes well, the decision? Let, well, let's say the IFBB says. The red line for liver enzymes is 100. If your liver enzymes are over 100, you need you can't compete. Okay, so now there's a good possibility that in the Olympia stage, at that day, won't be nobody on stage. My liver enzymes have barely ever been over 100. Yeah, but that was yours. But I'm just saying, yeah. there's a good possibility that someone that has, you know, at that point. So, but there's still... Somebody has to make the decision to say, no, you can't compete. You can compete. You can't compete. It's too big of a liability. It's, it's crazy. You, you can't well, do gonna, that. Who's going to get sued, though? Who's going to get sued? Well, there is, there, they will, people will when set, you say When you say liability. The IFB you're... could set themselves up for, 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 uh, 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 for some cases, of course. I mean, but I, I, don't understand, I don't understand why. So every, every sport has regulations, whether it be hockey, football, racing, Formula One, like I know, but a, I think I think this got to be this got to be done different. With you know, you can't do it. You know, federation. Okay, not, so federation so is another doctor. So, so let's just. Here, I have a different idea. One sec, can I give you one more? Yeah, so, sure. So that was just one idea, but and that one I know was far fetched, but mm -hmm. it was just something I threw out. Roman Fritz came on the show. We we were talking it out, just having having the same conversation, and Roman said, "Wouldn't it be better if they were just had to prove." They got their blood work done at the beginning of the year. They had to submit blood work to show that it got done. And That's I what added, I said. Yeah. And then I added, we should also have someone that's knowledgeable about blood work. That's maybe a doctor, not a doctor, but maybe uh, someone like a Chris Tuttle who's worked in hospitals to say, to do like a two hour seminar. Every athlete has to get their blood work done and participate in this two hour seminar so they know what good, bad what blood work is and bad blood work is and how to fix it. And they've already seen their own blood work. And then they can compete after they've done those two things. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, the seminars, absolutely, yes. And whoever's interested will go, but there's going to be a lot of knuckleheads. They won't even go because they don't want to know. That's the problem. No, but that's the point. Is the yeah. would so say you here's, what, here's, here's my suggestion. This is what I suggest. Sure. And because you can't tell people, listen, you have to do this. And if this is, if I don't like what I see, you're not going to get on that stage. You don't have that right. Okay. So here's what I would do in order to bring awareness. I like the fact, yes, have everybody in the beginning of the year do, and, 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 and January is the best month in the year, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. To do a full physical exam. Yeah. Not to prove to the IFB or to anybody what it no, is. No. Yeah. Just for the person to know 
where he's yep. at because he ultimately makes his own decision if he's going to go and, and continue doing what he's doing or if he's going to say, oh, listen, shit, my, my blood work is all over the place. I got to fix yep. this. Because yep. most of the guys, and you know as well as I do, that most of the guys don't even get their blood work done. True. So this is just for me to have everybody get at least once a year. So you have to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, we, and, and, and it could be wherever. It's just to prove that you did it because now you're in control if you ignore the signs or if you say, okay, I'm going to have to do something about this. And I believe that it will at least 50% more will be more aware and probably take care of, of, of certain things that they wouldn't take care of because they never go to the doctor. I agree. I, I think there's two, the only two issues with that. One, I think the seminar uh, needs to be mandatory because... You, how, are you gonna do, make it the, the, how, how are you going to make it mandatory? And if oh, somebody you, says, I'm not going, then what? If I don't want to go, I'm, a, hey, I'm sick. I'm not going. What, no, no, what, no, 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 no. It's online. You just watch it online. It's like a two-hour fucking no. seminar. You just go online like a Zoom call like we're doing now. And you watch the yeah. fucking seminar. It, it, it just, I'm just, this, is, this is why I say that. Mm. You said there's a lot of guys that don't get blood work done. And I think there's a lot of guys that do get blood work done that don't understand it or don't care. So if they do, if they're forced to do the seminar, like you can't get your pro card in the mail until we know you've been to this seminar. Maybe it's pre-recorded. Maybe not everybody has to be there at the same time. But until yeah. you've seen this thing, you can't get your pro card in the mail. That way, even the guys who have done their blood work know somebody has said to them, hey, these numbers, this is what bad blood work looks like. This is a couple ways to fix it. This is blah, 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 blah. So yeah. that's one thing I think is a good idea. Maybe it won't work. I don't know. But it's just something I would add. Yeah. And the second thing is, what if they do their blood work at the beginning of the year and it's totally fine because they're off? Well, at least they know they're fine. Yeah, but they won't but be that, but, but four months later when they're mid-cycle. I, I know, but it's just for, my idea. It's just so people that wouldn't go, at least you go at least once. And if you get the green light, you have the green light. And if at yeah. least you know. So nobody yeah. can prepare after that, can say, you know, oh, and, and, you, know I, you, you knew it. It's, you yeah, know, I you're agree. your own boss. I mean, I can't tell you what to do. And I agree. I, and I, can't, I couldn't tell you not to compete because at the end of the day, you decide what you do with your body, you know? If well, somebody, if somebody is smart enough or if somebody is worried enough about his health and longevity, you know, we say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna have to pull out. I don't think it's – listen, I'm not going to argue my point because I don't think it's ever going to happen, and I don't think it's necessarily the best idea. But mm. I do think if they really wanted to – they could tell people, hey, you can't compete unless you do this. And it's only say that because take fighting. You watch UFC all the time. No, those, fighter, the time. Those, those fighters have to be have to clear a physical before they're allowed to get into the octagon. There's no difference. Yeah. Right? Like they still there's still rules. If you if you drive a Formula One car, but they're not allowed to use but they're not allowed to use steroids. No, it doesn't matter though. Like the point I'm trying to make is like every federation has regu rules and regulations that an athlete has to meet before they're allowed to get on the field, get in the ring, get on the court, get in a race car, whatever it is. Mm. Bodybuilding is the only sport, if you want to call it a sport, that has zero regulations. You buy your card, whatever happens to you, we don't give a shit. I'm just like, I think it might be good, at least what you're saying, at least force them to get blood work done. So they're aware that of their own health. Yeah, that for sure to me is the minimum. Yeah. That they should start saying, look, you're in control of your own health, but mm -hmm. unless we get a copy of your blood work or somebody gets a copy of your blood work so that we know that you yeah. got it, yeah. you can't compete anymore. So I, I think we're in agreement. Like, I yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all for, yeah. I'm all for yeah. it, you know, but just, you know, I know there's certain liability issues where you just can't do it. But, you know, yeah. like I said, you know, I, I want to see this sport. Is staying around and and and, and we I don't I don't want to see anybody else dying. I mean it's my, it's 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 enough. My thing is, I feel like and I and the reason I say this is I did it. I know guys get their blood work, and they see things that aren't good, and they don't give a shit. See, because, that's that's because for me I can't I can't understand that. I know, but a lot of guys can, and I know that for a fact mm. because a lot of guys are one track mind. I want to win. I want to get better contracts. I want to get more money. I don't want to retire. I don't know what else I'm going to do with my life. Whatever the scenario excuse is, they're going to, oh, it's not that bad. My doctor said it's not that bad right now. It's okay. So they just go and they don't care. And that's why I said, like, personal responsibility is a nice thing to say. But a lot of these guys will see shitty blood work and not give a shit. Yeah. 
And I don't think that helps. Yeah. And the thing is, we're not only trying to help them in the moment. We're trying to help them. Like somebody said to me, well, how do you know Sean's blood work was bad or his heart was bad or whatever? And I'm like, I don't. I don't know if Sean's blood work was bad. But if it was, we could have prevented it from when he was 30. Because if he had good blood work at 30, he would probably be healthier at 40 or 45 or mm -hmm. 50. Or use John for an example. I don't know if John's blood work was bad, but maybe if it was when he was 30, that would have kept him healthier for the 10 years previous. And maybe he would have lived till he was 55 or 60 or 65 instead of 49. So we don't know. Like, I don't know what the answer is. All yeah. I know is there has to be something. Something's got to happen. Because it's not attractive like if you're trying to grow the sport from grassroots from 19 18 17 year old kids i hear them man I, I see their dms i see their comments it's not attractive for people to join if they think they're going to die when they're in their 40s mm. yeah so it's, true. Uh, it's, it's a tr it's a tough one man I, I understand the personal responsibility thing i just Bodybuilders are so one track mind, man. No. Like, I don't know, you're maybe you're different, but a lot of guys I came up with, including myself, are like, I don't give a fuck. This really? is the thing I love, and yeah. this is what I'm gonna do, and I don't give a shit about anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's phases where you don't worry or you don't just, you know, you tell yourself you do it every every six months or every year, and then next thing you know, it's been three years since you had your last check. You know, yeah. it happens. That can happen. I can see that happening, you know. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I think it would be great to, you know, to just just to make sure you get it. You, you want to know yourself. People you are scared. Think, let me ask you a different question. And this is probably the, the more important question is, is there a way, do you think, to be healthy and be an open class, a men's open class bodybuilder? Yeah, I think it with is. The, with the size they are now. Because that's I, what I worry about. I think it is if you don't go into your 40s and 50s. Okay. I think the older you get, the worse it, it hits your body. Because you're and yeah. you're young, you can do things in your body. <laughs> it's just recovery, you know it yeah. won't yeah it won't even it won't even affect your body at the, when you're in your 20s. So you know so you know let's take Nick Walker. Nick Walker is 20 something years old. He's probably got okay, okay, okay blood work with everything because you know whatever he's doing, he's young. His body is still, you yeah, know. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So, but once you get older in your forties and shit starts slowing down naturally, and you still want to push it as hard and probably harder than before because things don't respond the same. Yeah. Now you run into the risk of hurting yourself, you know, in, in the long run, and that's the problem. That's you know, point. when you look at these guys that are still here with us today, Lee Haney, he retired at 32. You know, yeah. the guy, Rich Gaspari, retired in his 30s. You know, yeah. it's different when somebody, when you go all the way into your 40s, we already know being 280 or 300 pounds or 260, depending if you're 5'4", being that, that way is not healthy for your heart. Okay? Yeah. I don't care yeah. what, what heart you have. It's not healthy. So you're basically yeah. stressing your heart on a daily so and if you do this for a longer period of time, of course, it's going to be more stress, you know, and eventually yeah. it's like buying a new car. You can buy a new car, but you can't drive it for the next 10 years without something's going. Yeah. So and yeah. if you don't yeah. do the services, you know, you don't see this shit happening before. Yeah. That's the problem. And this is how I look at it. And, you know, and, and yes, I understand most of these guys. I understand them because they don't want to know because, you know, if they find out, then they're stressed. And now I cannot do this. I understand. But listen. What's more important for you to stick around to see your kids grow up or for you to win a trophy? I think if you ask anybody that, there's an obvious answer. The problem is they don't think it's going to happen to them. I know, but now we've seen what's really yeah. going on. So now yeah. I think this is the time for, some, for a lot of people thinking yeah. and changing their mind. You, you changed your mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, but I'm... But, but. It's different changing your mind at 43 when you've already had a good career. Well, I'm talking is, about older guys mostly now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah. The younger guys, you know, you can't tell them nothing anyways. So yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the older guys. You know, and now the sport, sport of bodybuilding, you don't retire no more early. These guys start so, late. So let me ask you then. Do you think, and just hypothetically, hmm. you think if guys retired, if they, let's say they were forced to retire. You're forced to retire at 37. Whatever, it, number, pick a number, whatever. You think there would be less damage passed forward, like less yeah, guys passed I think the, 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 the earlier you, you, you stop, the, the, the better it is. I think once you get past 40, yeah. 
and and this does not count for everyone. I mean, there's guys they're going to do this, they're going to do this in the sixties, and they're still fine. Yeah, I mean, Dexter's yeah. fucking retired at fifty. He's fine. Yeah, but still, but we, it, be, listen, I, you know, we don't know what happens in the future. I'm not saying this is going to happen now. This can this can show up in ten years from now. Yeah, yeah. The damage that you did, you know, to 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 your body. So, I think, but the early, I think the earlier, I I, I would never tell someone you got to stop. No, no, I know that was just hypothetical. I, yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, but I believe that if you are older, and maybe not so much because you know you, you can do it conservative. You can be in the smaller doses, you know, and just do it literally. You know, come off and and, and do all yeah. that. You can, yeah. you know, you can pretty much fare very well, very well. Yeah. But yeah. being so heavy is what hurts you the most. Sure. High protein for so many years. Yeah. High blood pressure. You know, a lot of people have high blood pressure. They don't even know they have high blood pressure. Yeah, that's, you know? that's me. Yeah, and, high, that's and, me. And, and those three factors, it's the worst for kidneys. You know what I mean? And your kidneys are going to be okay until it starts. Who knows, yeah. 10 years from now. You yeah. know, and this is not from what you did two weeks prior. This is from what you did the last 10, 20 years. That was my point earlier is it starts yeah. at 30. And that's yeah. when you got to start taking care of it. You know, and, and that's yeah. why I just say, you know, I just want the guys, I hope the guys will take this serious and just, you know, get checked and then do what you do with it. If you, if you, if you, you know, value your life and, 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 you know, you fix it because everything's fixable, yeah. you know, don't sit at home and, and, and ignore it until it's not fixable no more. It's fixable. Guys, it's yeah, not yeah. that bad. You know, doctors yeah. understand and, you know, just, you know, you just got to do it. Yeah, it's a tough. It's a tough topic to. It's very tough, you know. There's so much. There's so much passion with some of the guys that it's hard to get through to them. But man, yep. it's like I've had I've had two close friends die in two years. I know. Yeah. Like fuck, you know. And I I wasn't. I knew Sean. I wasn't close friends with him, but I knew Sean. So it's three. Yeah. I mean, he's an Iron Brother. It doesn't matter if you know him or not. He's one of us. That's, that's you know, why and no close, nobody to deserves to die at 46. I don't care what you do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, unless you a serial killer and you killed 20 people, you deserve to die. <laughs> but other than that, you do not deserve to die. I don't care what you do or say, you know, and, and this, is the, this, this is the point. And, and if you want to grow the sport, which I still believe we can, we will grow the sport. We have to make sure we don't have this death going on every other week, right. you know, because yeah. this is not a good year. This is not a good last two years, yeah. you know, so hopefully... Ooh. I can't remember who just passed away. They were sixty something. Somebody was like. Uh, and what the about the probably. rumors, man? The rumors with uh, Victor Richards passing away all of a sudden. <laughs> How <laughs> stupid are people, you know, that fucking put know. out a fucking web call? He died. I don't know where they based that shit off, you know. Especially when you were so so called friends. So I you think- would, so you would listen to another website. And listen yeah. to what they say just because you can't reach him or he's not answering back to you, you're going to report it? Well, I think uh, we live in a day and age where everybody wants to get the clicks on YouTube. Yeah. They want to get the views. So they're like, I better get out first. Better say it first. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That pissed me even, off. That pissed me off. But listen. I didn't even, go ahead. I, I didn't even say anything about it. I didn't. I, uh, then again, I'm not a news channel, so I don't. Yeah, but how can you say something about it if you don't know if it's true or not? No, but even even like George and Sean, like I feel like some channels jump out and want to make videos because Clicks. they know it's going to get yeah. And Clicks. I didn't make those videos, so I'm like I didn't know George, and I didn't definitely didn't like I definitely didn't know George, and I only knew Sean through working with him. Right, right. So I'm like, it's not my place to make those videos, and so I just. But then again, I'm not a news channel, so these other channels are acting like news yeah. channels. They got to do whatever they want. Anyway, all right, brother. I'm, a, I'm looking forward to getting on the conference call with you tomorrow. Yeah. Regarding our gig, and uh, hopefully this I, is hopefully this is going to work out. I'm 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 pretty positive. I got my fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Keep your fingers crossed, and then I hope that this is something that's going to be going on for a long time. Yeah. Are we, we going to argue like this on the commentary? No, I like that. We won't. Yeah. It's why not? Fun. I mean, it's we, fun. We, it's we, fun. you know what? I like the commentary. I think be who you are. Yeah. Don't change. Your, don't all of a sudden try to be a personality that you're not. Are we going to talk about our own careers the whole time? No. How, like, <laughs> talk about how everybody's watery on stage. And they all look like they all look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I'm commentating. I'm commentating. No, that's not what I. No, yeah. that's not what I'm doing. Either. So I'm looking forward to talking to you tomorrow on that call, yeah. and hopefully we yeah. can break the news real soon 
I know the yeah. fans will love it. I'm fucking excited. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to an awesome three day weekend in Columbus yeah. with you, brother. Yeah. It's going to be a good time, man. Thank you so All much. All right, my for, man. Uh, so take care. I know you're busy. Up. I don't want to hold you yeah. up for your work. I know you're busy. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Yeah. And we'll talk tomorrow, brother. Thank you for All coming right, on, man. Okay, man. You take awesome. it easy.